Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for watching Real Estate Leaders with Tony Geraci. And uh, again, another great topic today. And I'm here with my friend David Finale. And David, thank you very much for joining today. And today we got we have a great, great topic. Or really, you know, two topics. We're talking about full and part-time agents and full and part-time agents, what we suggest should be a daily schedule. Now, it's always a, a big debate, always has. For right. getting of real estate and realtors is full time, part time. Should you be full time? Should you be part time? Who's better? Who, who, who gives better service? You have to be full time, or you you shouldn't be part time. Should you be full time when you start as a realtor right out of the gate, uh, or should should you start part time? So we're gonna dig into a lot of that today. But David, what do you think is the, the the number one thing when agents get into this business of full and part time, or where do you think you should start in, uh, trying to get everybody to understand what full and part time really means? Well, it's really it's really pretty simple. Which, whichever you're going to do, I mean, if you're if you're transitioning from you know an, another um, another career, or if you're someone that's been you know a stay at home mom or dad. Um, it's, it's one thing that to do the business and to get your license. Look, it's a known fact that in the first couple of years, 80%, 7% of new agents, um, leave the business. They, they, they don't, they don't succeed. And right. why is that? Is because it, there's, I believe some people will say, well, they didn't have the, the help that they needed or whatever. I believe it's lack of commitment on both the agent, on the agent's part, whether you're full-time or part-time. So if you're going to be full-time, you need to commit to it. And if you're going to be part-time, man, it is so hard because the commitment level is so much higher than that. And the thing to remember about being part-time, Tony, is that you want to be part-time, not sometime. So right. <laughs> clarify that. So if, if like, you remember, like, when you were in high school or college and you had a part-time job, right, you would show up at the job. If that part-time job was, you know, five to seven at night, you would right. make sure you were working at five and you went home at seven. You did what you were told between five and seven. Right. But as far as being part time, you got to look at it the same way. Your commitment's got to be the same thing. You really got to, you know, go through with that. And, and as far as the full time, it's the same thing. Look, you've got a reason for doing it. Maybe, you know, maybe one of your reasons is that, you know, uh, you like houses or, you know, real estate has always been in the back of your mind and you figured, you know, you know a lot of people. You can you can you know make some money at this at this thing, but you know you have to understand something. You need a goal that what you want to achieve and why you want to do it. You know that's really really important. A goal for a part time person, Tony, could be that they go full time in six to twelve months, or they're doing you know two transactions a minimum a month in, in for their business or right. whatever. But for a full time person, it's you know you're working you're working it. I mean. I like how you said uh, sometime uh, because I number one thing I push for agents, especially the new agents that get in the business, or I, I always bring it back to the people want to get more involved in their business and want to take that next step. Because sometimes they, they're part time for a while or have other jobs or other careers. But yeah, uh, really not to jump ahead to our, our into our later topic of scheduling, but you can't be sometime. You can't just do it whenever. You have a part-time job. You have to schedule it, but exactly. And, and I want to. I want to put that over to full-time agents as well. I mean, the reason that a lot of agents fail is because they're not committed, right? So, right. but there's a whole package, in my opinion, is a whole package. I call it GCAP. It's goals to commitment, building the action steps to achieve that commitment, and then you go out and actually do the work. You perform, which is the P part of it. So it's right. really important, and I'll, and I'll talk about GCAP forever, huh? and I can make it work for any topic there is, because if you really think about it, for anything you want to achieve, you know, we talk about goals, we talk about commitment, the action steps and performing, but the one thing that's important, it's not, there's another C, it's called consistency, right. and to be consistent in everything you do. Now, what do you think about people starting uh, part-time as a new age, and what, what's the number one thing you would tell them to do? Uh, they nearly need to focus on the support system that they have in both their professional and family life. What I mean by that is um, it's something I talk about when we talk about life, okay? We talk mm -hmm. about 
What's more important, your personal life, your family life, or your business life? Personal, family, or business? The answer to the question, everybody's saying, I'm going to say family is first. And you're right, but you're actually wrong. Personal is first. Why? Look at it this way. If you've ever said to yourself, if I only could get five minutes to myself, you know that you need time to yourself in order to be that person for your family, be that person in your business. So the support system you have behind you, be that your family, be that a spouse, be that a partner, be that a group, be that whoever is important to you in your life, that you have their support. And also, there's nothing wrong with telling the people you're working with that you're also in the real estate business. Right. Some people don't want to do that. I get it because they don't want them to think that they're going to leave or, or, or whatever. But it's also important to have support. Along with that, the support also goes down to your schedule. Right. If you have the support of your family and, your, and, and yourself, you're going to be able to commit the time. So support is the number one thing I think you need. Yeah, I, I like that. And what I uh, stress is that a lot of us, uh, especially people getting into real estate, think they, I have a great support system, uh, great family, friends. They're very supportive. But uh, I usually suggest them, what did you tell them what they have to do? And they kind of give me that blank stare. It's like, yes, a lot, sometimes yeah. a lot of us think support means just rah, rah, you go get them. I'll support you. But you don't tell them what you want from them because you don't realize, especially getting into real estate uh, with nights and weekends, you have to tell your support system what their job is to support you, what you need from them to right. support you. Right. Right. So, and what your schedule is going to be, you just don't need the rah, rah cheerleader. You're going to need like, uh, you have a spouse, you have kids like, um, do you know that when I get into real estate and you sit down with your spouse and your support and your family go, listen, I might not be available between six o'clock and 10 PM on certain nights of the week or almost every night of the week. Like, and everybody sits back like, Oh no, we didn't realize that this new career you're getting to, you're not going to be around. I, I'm not going to be right. able to, to, to right. help with, dinner or help with taking the kids to baseball or basketball. So my, my first suggestion of people when you talk about, I have a great support system is tell them what you actually need them to do daily, weekly, monthly, whatever to support you, not just a rah, rah, go get. Them. Yeah. Because, you know, along with the support, with the support system that you have, it's going to create your environment. And if your environment is tense, you're going to be tense, and that could cause stress, and you don't want to do that. I mean, it's okay to be tense. It's not okay to have stress. Stress is a bad thing. Having tension actually pushes you forward to get you get your work done. Now, when we talk about you know the, the, the part-time and full-time stuff, and we talk about schedules, as you, as you mentioned previously, I mean, it all goes hand in hand because you're, you're, you're going to have to decide, you know, is there – I mean, if, if you have – uh, a family, mm -hmm. you have people that you uh, are with all the time, you're, you're going to have to schedule what you do with them and how you do it. And in order to do that, you need their support. So we keep, it's going to be, it's going to be a, a, not even an ebb and flow. It's going to be ever, ever a continual cycle where, you know, you're going to uh, build up yourself to build a business and that's what you need and you need their support now. Part-time versus full-time is very different because part-time, your schedule is going to vary on what kind of a job you have, right? So if you have a job where you work at home, uh, that's a lot That's a lot different part-timer than someone that works nine to five. Very right. different. You know, do you work every day? Do you work, Do you, work, uh, you know, do you have a lunch hour? Do you take a lunch hour? What kind of a producer are you at your job that you have now? Are you a, you know, are you a top producer where you're going all the time Then at five o'clock you're cutting yourself off? Well, that's going to be difficult for a lot of people like that because they're in their job for like they're, they're really excited about it. They work. And to do the same thing to another job is like having two full-time jobs. So you have to be careful what energies you put forth to everything. Oh, definitely. Exactly. I, I have many realtors. We, uh, as a, a broker for the last several years, I bring on at least 30 to 35 brand new agents each year. Everybody's different. Family, no family daytime job, nighttime job, work from home. Everybody's different, but you got you to be organized with everything. And I've seen 
agents over the years go, great, I have a nine to five job. I could do this nights and weekends, which is great if you schedule, but you forgot to think about all those times at your other job that they used to tell you, hey, can you stay an extra hour? Can you, can you work a little flex time? Can right. you pick up a Saturday? And you didn't realize that your other employer, your first year, your, before you got into real estate, was counted on you to do all these things. And then that was suffering. You didn't realize and you were upsetting people at work. So sometimes, uh, you know, you have to, or anybody watching that you have to manage how you tell your other job if you're going to have another job because it could affect that job. <laughs> exactly. Does that make sense? Because uh, I've seen people, agents call me at five, six o'clock, go, oh, I got showings tonight, but my uh, job, uh, my uh, boss is going to be mad at me if I go out and showings. He needs me to stay later. I need someone to pick up for me. And didn't think about this before they got into real estate. And I, because they didn't really know what their schedule was or what there's what to they expect. Right. Yeah, it's very it's very important when you look at schedule and you look at getting into this in a full time basis or a part time basis. We've talked a lot about part time. Mm-hmm. Your 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 um your 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 schedule and what you're going to do. You really have to think about what you're doing. And it's the same for full time. You know, why are you getting into this business? What's your basis? What's the goal? Is it lifestyle? Is it money? Is it is it that you know if you're part time. Uh, you want to change your lifestyle or you need to start part time in order to make enough money to go full time. You know, right. so you know, it's very important to know exactly why you're doing it and to have an understanding of the time that has to be put into it, especially when it comes to schedule. Because, you know, every day is going to bring a new opportunity. Every day is going to bring excitement. Every day is going to bring work. A lot of people right. think that that word is a four letter word. And, I, and honestly, it is. And a lot of this is all going to come down to you and yourself. Like, what are you? What, what's what's good for you? How are you? How are you building your business and your life? Right. Mm-hmm. The age and where you are in your life stages is going to have mm-hmm. so much to do with both full time and part time. Look, people will tell you that this isn't an easy business, but I will tell you that when you get going, it can be a very easy business. Would you agree with that, Tony? No, yeah, definitely. If you've got everything organized, you got things systematized, you have that support network between uh, your office and your home life and the people around you. Yes, because it, just like anything, uh, any other job, when you enjoy doing it, you got it down to systems, uh, you make it look easy. You know, there's agents out there that are that always do well every year and they make it look easy. But if it's hard, if every day is a struggle for you, it's going to be, you know, it's just not going to be easy. You're not going to be successful at it. But there are struggles to begin with, but you got to have that love and that support uh, all around you to get through it. Right. So, so earlier we've said the word schedule a couple of times. So I want to talk about a couple of things. It's all right with you to go through what it, what it, what kind of a daily thing you should do, no matter what. Yeah, if you're part of that, all right? Yeah, definitely. Go ahead. Okay. So, so I'm just going to give you kind of like what I do, and this is uh, based on my programs and stuff. And I do this. I, I coach this to a lot of different people. Just, you know, first up, you know, I, I'm if I have to set an alarm, I'm getting up with that alarm's going off. I'm not hitting the snooze button. You know. Right. I'm going to take a few minutes alone with myself, maybe meditate a little bit. And then what I'm going to do, and if you have trouble with meditation, I get it because I don't have trouble doing it. Um, just stare out the window for 30 seconds. Start there. Mm-hmm. Start really slow, right? Um, look at the breeze. Uh, look at the rain. Look at the snow, wherever you are. Look at the, 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 the ocean, wherever you are. You know, Just look at something. Concentrate on something for 30 seconds because it will clear your head. The next thing I do is there's, I have a book on one side. One page is uh, it's a journal. One page is gratitude. The other page side is affirmations. I write down what I'm grateful for because what you appreciate appreciates. Very, 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 very important. Thank you, Grant Wise. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then on the right side, write your affirmations and your goals, right? Either before or after that, you should have some kind of workout routine. Look, I'm not going to tell you that, you know, you got to work out. You got to do all this stuff, but this will clear your head. And if you, if you, like, for instance, right, the reason I do my gratitude journal and my affirmations before I work out, because it begins to get me psyched up to get to the workout that 50% of the time, I got to be honest with you, I don't want to do. <laughs> right. But here's the thing. 
I'm up at quarter to five every day, 4.45 every day, and I'm up. What the hell else am I going to do? I could work, but that's really not fun. This is my time. I don't want to waste my time. So I'm going to go work out and do my best to have fun with it, right? right. Um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the day started and refresh that way and be in a really good position to do what I have to do for the day. The day is going to start, you know, really good for you. Depending if you're part-time or full-time, you know, right. like, like you said, the, the, what you have to do at your job is going to depend on what your schedule looks like. So that's a, that's a morning ritual that mm -hmm. I love to, to tell people about, and, and <clears throat> I do it every day. Even if I don't feel good, I do it every day, which is rare. And but and all those things that you don't like to do, you at the end of the day, you're happy that you did them. Absolutely. <laughs> so you don't like the process, but you like the getting through them. You know. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you know what? I mean, there's some days where I, I run three days a week, and you know, I wasn't born. I was born at night, not last night. So you know, I, I've been around a couple of years, and people say, "Well, what are you running for?" Because I like to do it, I think. Uh, I sound like I'm not <laughs> yet. But, you know, I mean, every day is progress for me on, on how I'm running and, and, and my pace and everything else. I mean, with technology these days, it, it's gotten a lot more fun because I have actually have an app on my phone that connects to my running shoes. Which oh, is really? really? I didn't really know cool. that. Really Even kind of cool, right? I'm not a runner. <laughs> so it makes it a little bit more fun to do the run. Well, that's more right. But the point is, is that, yes, even running or lifting, or walking on a treadmill on an incline. I mean, those things are cannot are not always fun, but you set up you set it up to be fun. You set yourself up to succeed by having commitments and goals. So let's set yourself up to succeed having commitments and goals with your workout. And here's the, just one last thing about working out. I didn't mention anything about nutrition, but I'm just going to mention one little sentence. You mm -hmm. can't outwork out a bad diet. So if your mm -hmm. diet sucks and you eat a lot of sugar, a lot of candy, and a lot of processed foods. A workout's not going to cure that. Right. And I always um, do it. What do you suggest, I don't know, mentally or uh, attitude-wise? Because what a lot of agents that want to take their business to the next level, schedule things, new agents trying to get to be full-time, is this is when you do your prospecting and you schedule things and you have to make – sacrifices like working out when you work out in the morning or you do things for your health like say you eat healthy and you're working out and then all of a sudden at the end of the week the end of the month whatever you're not losing weight and you wanted to lose weight you get discouraged so i see that with real estate agents a lot like i'm doing my prospecting i'm doing my social media i'm doing all of this i'm taking time away from my other job because i want to go full-time or from my family what do you suggest mentally to say you got to keep going and doing the right things and it will eventually happen we just you don't know exactly when it could be next week you all of a sudden you get two or three new buyers and a, a new listing appointment you know it's getting through that 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 uh not satisfaction right away that like wow i did my prospecting calls for a week i did this and i got this right away you got to keep going right what do you tell yourself Number one, if you're going through the motions just to get it done, you don't have the right attitude, and people on the other end of the phone are going to hear that, number one. Uh, number two, if you're doing everything as prescribed, you're right. Business is going to come. Let's look at, let's look at weight. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I am not a weight expert. I just know, as I said, you can't outwork out a bad diet, right? I know that with me. I, I know how my body is. I mean, you know, um, I, I, have a, I have a goal in my workout routine and where I want to get with it, but I also have committed to eating cleaner, eating better. I feel better. I mean, even in my run, I feel better, right? Because I just I'll use my run, okay? So last year when I ran, I was training for a half marathon, and I couldn't understand why I wasn't able to increase my pace. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in a month's time, I should have been able to go from a 10-minute mile to a nine and a half minute mile. But I never could do it. And if I did it, it was like once, and then I couldn't do it for four weeks. Because I'd, I'd get tired. I couldn't do it. But what I realized recently over the past six weeks is you can't outwork out a bad diet. And what I mean by that is if I ate a lot of bread or a lot of heavy stuff that wasn't in sugars and processed stuff, I wasn't going to be able to achieve any goals. 
So mm-hmm. as I have cut that out and looked at what I had to do to achieve something, it's working for me. It's the same with your business, right? So if you look at prospecting, if you look at doing all the right things, and your mentor, your broker, your coach, your manager, whoever has said, do this, 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 and this, and you'll see, you'll see progress, you'll see business. The thing you need to do if, it's, if things aren't working is to look in the mirror. Mm-hmm. Look in the mirror to see if you actually are doing the work and what you have to do to get there, right? It doesn't, if you, if look, if you keep working harder and harder and you do it the wrong way, you're going to get more behind her. Right. Right. So kind of so, like you can't, if you're saying that like about a diet and working out, you can't outwork out a bad diet. Maybe you could take that and say you can't, you can't outwork a bad attitude. A bad process, a bad strategy. A bad process, a bad attitude, not being uh, right. organized. So you could work hard. But if you're not organized, you're not systematic, you're not keeping notes, you're not follow up right, and you don't have the attitude, if you don't have the love for the business, it's going to be hard. Right. So, so the idea is that, you know, the commitment to what we talked about, we talked about earlier about commitment. If, if, if you're doing the things properly, your schedule isn't working for you. That's probably one of the things. And to talk about schedules, it's really simple. I mean, Honestly, I think the best time to do any kind of prospecting and all kinds of prospecting is 8 to 11 in the morning. Mm -hmm. You've got to commit to making a certain number of contacts every day. Right. Right? Um, I work with a lot of different people, and one of the things that they commit to is they commit to making 100 contacts a day. Right? That sounds like an awful lot, and guess what it is. But you're not calling 100 people. You're sending out gratitude texts. You're sending out things – thanking people for being your friend or, you know, you're sending out information and you're connecting with people. Connecting. A, contact, right. a contact is not a dial. You can, you can 500, you can dial 500 people in a day easily. Right? right. A dial is one thing. Leaving a voicemail is another, but actually connecting one way or the other with a human being is going to build your business. Sure. So understanding that schedule of eight to 11 and everything I said about ritual is before eight o'clock. Right. It's before right. eight o'clock. I, I I totally agree with you. And uh, so basically, if you could s- schedule it, process it, you enjoy doing it, or to a level where you feel good at the end of the day, kind of like uh, a run. Not everybody loves to run, but they'll feel better that they did it. They you got through it. At the end of the day, if whatever you did, but I. And just having that right mindset that you're okay with it. Like that right. at the end of the day, you're like, I didn't waste my time doing that. And uh, not being upset. Well, I, I took time away from my family or friends to do this. And it wasn't a waste of my time. I'm happy at the end of the day that I got that done. Absolutely. And, and, and when you're looking at, when you're looking at your schedule, if you're really, you know, coming from a place of integrity, you know, you, you've got to, I mean, you use that word integrity for a lot of things. You need to be, you know, integrity, have integrity with yourself, have integrity with your customers, and have an, have an integral feeling, integral feeling of, you know, accomplishment. And, and look, everybody's goal in life um, is they want something, right? Mm-hmm. As a marketer, you're trying to give people what they want, really, not what they need. You right. think you know what they need, and the people that fail in this business in marketing is because they're trying to give people what they think they need, not what they really want. That's right. why Apple has been super, super, super um, um, successful because they're giving people what they want, not necessarily what they need, what they think right. they need. Microsoft tries to give people what they think they need. Right. <laughs> That's a big difference between the two companies in a nutshell, right? So if you give somebody what they want, they're going to help build your company. Look at Apple. Look at how it is today, right? Um, right. And I'm not saying that because the new phone just came out. I just, I just, I always use that, that 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 example, right? But if you have a good schedule and you have a good schedule as a as a new agent, let's talk about that first, right? You know, that eight, eight to eleven, that is non-negotiable, and, right? And 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 you're not going to follow. You you can do some follow up with leads when you finish your prospecting. Now it's right. not follow up time. Now. If you've got a buyer that you that you don't have haven't had an appointment with yet, you're still trying to get that appointment. That's a contact. That's not a follow up. So understand the difference, right? Um, right. 
Try to get in contact with, 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 with leads that are not responding to you. Try to and talking to your sphere of influence. Doing your social media posting. If you're doing it for prospecting only, that's prospecting. So everything goes into the 8 to 11. But your objective is always to reach a certain number of contacts. Right. Now, after 11, okay, you want to take a 20-minute break and check your email and check your, 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 your social as well. Do that. But if you're going to do that, Tony, I suggest you use this, this thing on your phone called a timer. Right. Especially if you're going into social media. Like, I, I think I did it last week or the week before. Right. Well, I, yeah. I said, you know, I said to, to my phone, give me a, a countdown. That's going to keep you in tune and, integri- and, and within integrity with yourself as well. Your appointments can be in the afternoon and you can quit at five or six. And what's going to happen if you're doing your prospecting first thing that day? Man, I tell you what, what's going to happen is you're going to have the business and you're going to quit every day at a certain time and say, wow, today was a great day. I can't wait till tomorrow. Right. That's good. Right? Oh, but, definitely. But there's but there's one other thing before I go into the part-time agent schedule, and this goes for both part-time and full-time. Your schedule must, it has to, it must have a minimum of 30 minutes a day of practice or role play. Yep. Two things. See, I'm not telling you that you have to have a script and sound like a robot. I'm saying that you need to know what the hell to say on the tip of your tongue. What do right. I mean by that? If you practice properly, all of a sudden you're going to have a conversation with somebody and it's going to come out. Something's going to come out of your mouth that you had no idea why it came out of your mouth, but it was like what you're supposed to say because you practiced and role played properly. Look, as, a, as an industry, we don't believe in practice. As an industry, we need to look at, you know, football started now, right? Look at what they do. They practice every day. The day right. before the Super Bowl, the week before the Super Bowl, what are those two teams doing? They're still practicing. They're still <laughs> practicing. Well, right. you know, the Yankees have clinched the division and they're going to be in the playoffs. What are they doing? They're practicing before every game. You look at this guy, DJ LeMayhew, who plays three positions in the infield. Every day he's taking ground balls at each position before right. the game starts. It's practice, right? So um, – that's 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 what I think is really really important. Oh, definitely. No, and it, either uh, going over things in your head, saying what you're going to say to people. It could be you know by yourself. Like I, if I uh, when I run into people, this is what I'm going to tell them. The the one minute I have right next to them, this is what I'm going to how what I'm going to be saying to people that are. I, I get you know ten minutes of conversation and reach out to your any agent watching this. Reach out to your broker, your owner, your manager. You know, uh, set up role playing times. Reach out to other agents. Other agents love to help other agents. Uh, yeah. Practice. <laughs> so remember, remember, you know, it's it's everybody says it's a numbers game. Well, you know, I guess it is because you need the context. Everybody needs to know their numbers, you know, and that's where the the the, the, the better you get at your prospecting, the right? Your business will be. I, so I, I, that, I, comes from, that comes from practice. I exactly. I, I'll I'll put that into like what I think and compare it to the numbers. Uh, it's a numbers game, but I don't play baseball. I'm not a professional baseball player, but if you get me up to bat a hundred times, I still won't hit as many, uh, you know, I won't hit a home run, but you get someone who pro- is a professional baseball player, throw three pitches, they'll hit maybe two home runs. It's not a numbers game. If you don't practice and don't do it, it's just going it, to, you're going to have to do it tw- 200 more times or be in front of a buyer or potential customer 200 more times than someone if they get two people in front of them and they get both of them to use them as their realtor. If you, you know, if you don't practice, it doesn't matter how many people you're going to be in front of. Some people just use going in front of people as practice. <laughs> so, yeah, if you, but that's a waste of an opportunity though. If you, you're, it's a waste of, if you're just, well, I'm just going to keep on being in front of potential clients and tell my listening presentation or my buyer presentation or what they should do to use me. That's a waste of, uh, you know, it, it's like practicing during a game. You don't do that. Don't do that. Right. And, and, and you know what? And that's what we do as an industry. I have found that as an industry, we're practicing in front of our clients. Right. You know, I can see, I, I you know, I, I will tell you this. One thing that Tom Ferry said once is that, you know what, as a new agent, 
get your script out for, for, for expireds and call old expireds and, and, and do the, if you have nobody to practice with, do it there because look, they're never going to see you. They never know who you are. So if you make a mistake, okay, fine. They're not going to remember you. They're not going to know who you are. Right. But, and I, yeah, Mike Ferry is great. I also like uh, Brian Buffini. He promotes uh, the mayor campaign. Right. Like a campaign, a mayor campaign. You're the mayor of uh, your town. What are you going to say to people in that split section? Like you're a mayor and you're a politician and you're out there campaigning for yourself as a business. What are you going to say? You've got to have a mayor campaign. What are you going to say to get them to use you to keep them yourself on top, uh, top of their mind? Exactly, and I just want to—I just want to hit the part-time agent schedule real quick. Yeah, we're running up against time. Um, look, it's simple. It's an eight-day week job. There's no, no question about it for you, right? So your your nightly thing is going to be two to four hours, depending on where you are in your job. The more the better, but you need an hour at least every night of prospecting, five nights a week. Now, Fridays might be a little different, so your prospecting may go into a Saturday, where you might walk a circle prospecting. You might do that, right? Your weekends eight to 12 hours a day. That's just the way it's going to be. If you really want to be successful, if you've got that goal of going full time in six to 12 months or those two transactions a month, you know what? If you hit it hard, you're going to be able to do it. Now, here's the thing I want you all to understand that having a goal and committing to a goal is one thing. Um, how you get to that goal is another. A lot of people will say, well, make your goals realistic. I say, no, I say, make your goal anything you want it to be, right? It's your plan, it's your action steps of what you're doing that need to be realistic. And what I mean by that is, if you tell yourself as a part-time agent, I'm gonna make 100 calls every night, don't do that because you're never gonna do it. Right. You're gonna fail. If you say, I'm gonna talk to 10 people tonight and I'm not gonna stop until I actually talk to 10 people, Right. there's a goal, exactly. there's an action step, right? Right. Very, very, very important, right? You need to utilize the time you have as a part-time person. Here's another example. If you drive to work, you can make phone calls on your way to work and on your way home from work, depending on the distance. Right. If you take mass transit, okay, so make it comfortable where you have your laptop out or something that you can work on or audible. Listen to books. The best book to read is Seven Levels of Communication for a New Agent and a part-time agent. Great book, and then it would be um, uh, Seven Levels of Communication, and after that, sorry, The Miracle Morning. Those two go okay. very, very, very well together. Miracle Morning for real estate agents. So those yeah, no, I haven't seen that one. I gotta look up that one. What's that? I gotta look up that one. I haven't heard of that one. It's, 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 it's they're two great, Miracle Morning is great, and Seven Levels of Communication well, give you yeah, the idea of the best way to build your business and way to start. I built a program on it, uh, well, not on those books, but by using thinking of that process. Those. Well, great. So, what do you think? A recap, right? A thirty-minute. What What do you think? One last thing. Do you think that the part-time person schedule and the full-time schedule? Uh, agent schedule is basically the same thing, just putting more time into it. Is there something there's that a full-time or part-time agent is doing? different that's totally different it's just the time the, the difference between the part-time and the full-time is several things one the time of it how much time you actually have second is you're going to basically as a part-time agent connect with people you know as your base of business it's got to be your base of business to start and it is probably going to be all of your business because in order to get the time to call expireds, FISBOs, do, you're going to do open houses. That's another pillar. And you can also circle prospect. But those are, I mean, you're going to have, you're going to do less things, do less pillars because right. it's time. Um, and last but not least, the most important thing in your part-time or your full-time business in this business is your commitment to success. What is it? What do you right. want it for? Why do you want it? Great. Well, that's a lot of great information, everybody. And remember... Feel free, anybody watching this, reach out to us because we're, you know, in a half hour, we could go on for hours on this topic. But everybody, the main thing about it is everybody's different. you got to get your schedule in order and sit down with your broker, your manager, your coach, uh, another top agent in your area or in your office and help let them help you succeed and tell you what they've done. 
to succeed. They'll tell you. They're not going to tell you their exact client's names and numbers, but they're going to tell you, this is how I, I set up my day. This is how I set up my week. This is how I prospect. This is how I, I schedule myself. So reach out to your broker, manager, uh, someone in your office or in your area, and they'll be happy to help us out. And of course, Dave and I are always there to help you too. Exactly. So. exactly. And I want to add one other thing for both new and part-time. Yeah. More, more important for part-time is that if you've got a full-time agent that you can talk to, I mean, even if you've got to like give them a, a couple of bucks from each deal or whatever, it's not the end of the world. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to do some work for you and they're going to be there for you. I'm not saying that it's a mentor. I call them, I call them a fat ass, full-time agent, full-time agent supporter, <laughs> FTAS. And, and the reason for that is that it's always good to have someone other than a coach, a manager, a broker or whatever, that, can, that will give it to you. But I'm going to say one thing. As a new agent, please, when someone says that doesn't work, don't listen to them. When a new agent says, right. I tried that, it didn't work, don't listen to them if you're trying to do it because maybe they didn't do it the way you're doing it. I like it. Well, David, thank you very much for your time. Everybody, thank you very much for watching today. And remember, next week, 11 o'clock, Tuesday, we'll have more great topics for you. Again, thanks, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Peace out. Thank you so All much. Right. Bye-bye.